Hi, welcome to today's devotion. We begin today with a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all peoples shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up and do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. In this passage, the prophet Isaiah speaks to God's people who had been exiled from their home in Jerusalem after having been conquered by armies of the Babylonian Empire. God's people had been invaded and defeated. Their city and their temple had been destroyed and laid to waste. God's people had been forcibly removed from their ancient cultural and religious home and dragged away into exile. They no longer had a home. They had been torn away from it. They no longer had a temple. It was destroyed. And it seemed they no longer had a God. God had apparently turned away from them. Having been defeated and humiliated, and having spent decades decades in exile, the Israelites must have surely thought that God was forever angry and had abandoned them. This is something that some of us may be feeling as well during this time of COVID. We've been engulfed in a pandemic since the month of March. Nine months of lockdowns and face masks and social distancing and isolation and uncertainty and anxiety and sickness and death and who knows what else. Where is God in all of this? The Israelites wondered. Where is God in all of this? We may still ask. What does God have in store for us? They asked and we still ask. And then in the face of all this, the prophet Isaiah announces the good news to God's people. God is with them. In fact, the prophet urges Jerusalem herself to shout out the good news. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up and do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. God is not hidden. God is not far off. God is not silent. God is here. God comes with power. God comes to repay God's people for all they have suffered. God himself will take care of them. God himself will take care of you. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Where is God in all of this? 
What does God have in store for us? God is here with us and God will care for us and lead us. Professor Mary Jane Hamig writes, the transient quality of our existence contrasts sharply with the word that stands forever. Isaiah assures us that God who has, that God has not forsaken or forgotten God's people. The one who comes indeed comes with might and comes in a way that changes the very landscape. God does not come to destroy us, but rather to comfort us, feed us, and gather us to himself. God's coming is not to be feared, but to be welcomed. Truly, these are good tidings for all people. Let us pray. We thank you that you have not forsaken us, O God, but rather have come to comfort us. Help us to tell the good tidings of your coming. Help us to believe and rejoice in this good news. Amen.